Gina, Gina. The news with Gina Grad. So Paul Manafort, who is President Donald Trump's imprisoned, well, for now, uh, imprisoned campaign chairman, uh, former, was released to home confinement for the rest of his sentence Wednesday amid concerns that he could contract the coronavirus in prison. This is according to NBC News. Senior officials at the Justice Department headquarters in Washington played no role in the decision for the 71-year-old, according to a source. The Bureau of Prisons says there are no known cases of coronavirus at the Loretto Prison in Pennsylvania. So far, about 2,500 inmates have been released of, uh, to home confinement since Attorney General William Barr's March 26 memo instructing the Bureau of Prisons to prioritize home confinement because of the pandemic. Another one that was going for it, but I don't think got it, was um, Van Houten, uh, the uh, Charles Manson oh, follower. Manson family. Leslie Van yeah. Houten? Is yeah. it Leslie? I can't remember. I think it was Leslie. Um, they had, a, uh, had some footage from like the L.A. sheriff, whatever, the lockup where guys were trying to give it to each other. Yeah, guys yep. that? Drinking, <laughs> drinking, passing that hot water around. And that like cup. huffing into the same mask. Yep. Um, also, and then I think X amount of them did get it, but they, they didn't, sure did. they, didn't they, let, did they didn't not let those guys out. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it, it, you know, they spread it, I guess they spread it to the guards and, and whatever, but it doesn't seem to be affecting the prisoners that much themselves because they're all probably 26 and like, you know, 5% sure. body fat. Yeah. It mm-hmm. just yeah. doesn't seem to be affecting them, but they are using it as an excuse to get out. A lot of them are. All I'm right. Trying. Mm-hmm. So Manafort, I think it was, didn't he have like seven years and now he's just going to cool his heels at home. <laughs> and he's got, he's probably, he's, pro- he's probably got a good home to go to. I I'm sure. Say. Yeah. I, I'm really, really well done. I'm I just, the, the, I, I really, if you really think about, the concept, like the, the concept of confining someone, like you need to be in a cage, essentially, or, or a bigger cage with a smaller cage in the middle of it. Unless you're violent, I don't need you in that cage. I, mm-hmm. I need you out making restitution or doing something. I need you doing something. I really don't need you in the cage part. That The part where you're right. in the cage is the part where you're dangerous to me, anybody, whatever, whatever you did, Lori Lachlan, whatever. I just, I don't need you in the cage. I, I, if there's some violence connected to you, if you're putting your hands on people, I need you, I need you in the cage. If you're not, I don't need you in the cage, but I'd like to come up with something better, something that worked. You know, I don't want it to be a choice between in a cage or in your living room. I'd I'd, I'd like there to be some restitution, something that you're doing. It's weird that paying back your debt to society in a lot of ways is spending time in prison. It's like, well, if you literally have a debt to society, pay it back. Figure out a way to get that back. Yes. I don't know. I uh, Maybe we own your ass for three years. Maybe you're working, picking up garbage like they do on the side of the freeway. Like maybe you're working, uh, putting out forest fires or digging up, digging fire lines. Like I know there's a kind of a furloughed work version of what we're talking about and there's you know, community hours, like, you know, how many hours right. did you get a community service and stuff? But I'd like to really extend it, which is mm-hmm. I would like everybody before you enter prison for us to sort of give you a grade like we give restaurants in California, you know, and right. if you're going to get an A, that means you didn't put your hands on anybody. That means this is fraud, whatever, welfare fraud, tax fraud, money laundering, like whatever, whatever you can do in the white collar world or the sort of blue collar version of this that doesn't involve you putting hands on people. We'll give you a grade. If you're an A or B, you're not going to get incarcerated. We'll do something else with you. If you're a C or D, you're going in. It seems pretty basic to me. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why they say, like, is this person a danger to themselves or others? If the answer is no, the answer is no. Right. And they make the flight risk assessment all the time about mm-hmm. is this guy, is he a flight risk? I feel like they could do it. with. It. Well, first things first. Why are you in front of a judge? Is it because you <laughs> bonk someone yeah, here. over the head with a pipe or is it because you fudge some shit on your tax forms? Right. That'll help. Here? Right. Yeah. How'd you get here? We'll help. Yeah. All right. 
Well, uh, a little while back, we uh, it was it was fun to watch and then make fun of all the celebrities singing Imagine together because, you know, that was that was moving the needle. Uh, there's been a bit of a send up on that. Comedian David Cross shared a new montage, much like the Gal Gadot one, the, the star studded Imagine video. Only this time has a little twist. The Arrested Development star gathered a lot of his comedian friends and actors, and they all did their version of of another hit. Um, really close to home. People were very sincere about it. Uh, here's just a snippet from the song that they did. Don't want to argue. I don't want to debate. Don't want to hear about the kind of foods you hate. You won't get eat your it. dessert till you clean up your plate. <laughs> so eat it. I don't oh, yeah. care if you're full. Just eat it. Eat it. Get yourself an A. You can beat it. Have Hell. some more chicken, have some more pie. Have some more chicken, have some more pie. Have some more chicken, have some more pie. It doesn't matter if it's boiled or fried. Just eat it. Eat it. So it's about, you know, two and a half minutes. It's funny. Brian Cranston makes an appearance. And I don't want to spoil it for you. But at the very end, you get the man himself, Weird Al closing the whole thing out it's it's cranston bob odenkirk sarah silverman al franken jack black rachel bloom phil rosenthal so many then of course yeah. al at the end yeah uh the video was done as a part of the mr show kids with beards presents come join our zoom tacular annual <laughs> business call it's a charity special to raise money to fight the coronavirus and uh it's, it's cute i was writing i uh, had one of my text chains with daniel and jimmy and cousin Sal and I don't know what we're talking about but I was like announced I don't like knowing this much about celebrities I said uh you watch TMZ every night I know I don't want to I'm compelled (laughs) I have to (laughs) I watch TMZ because it's funny your buddy Derek is funny like it's a legitimately if you watch TMZ will have legitimately more laughs than your average half hour sitcom does it's a funny it's a funny format but because the, the stuff is just uh, Nick Jonas's wife is pregnant. You know, it's just like, you know, I, I don't care about Zero his barker. wife being pregnant, but I like the commentary on it. But either way, um, I was writing. I think I wrote Jimmy and those guys. I said, I sort of grew up thinking that um, Rock Hudson was a lady killer and mm-hmm. Paul Lynn was an improv master. <laughs> Like, that's how I grew up. I didn't know they were both gay. I didn't know Paul was getting lines fed to him at long before the show began of the questions. I just lived in a world where I said, that dude loves the ladies and that dude is lightning fast with a retort in the middle, rid- riddle that Hollywood Square, in the middle of the Hollywood Square. And I kind of liked it that way. And uh, yeah, so my time. my 80 year old grandpa liked it that way, too. He thought Paul sure. Lynn was a genius and he never stopped talking to me about how fast the guy was. <laughs> and he, that's what he liked. Fast and light on his feet and light on his feet. Prepared to sweep a woman away, even though he never <laughs> does. All right. Sorry. Where were we? So speaking of all this poker talk, MGM Resorts International released a safety plan earlier for reopening the hotels and casinos. The plan includes closing buffets, which is just a Shonda heartbreaking, putting hand sanitizer on casino floors, encouraging social distancing. Some casinos could open up as early as June. The casino experience will be different. It'll be a little more complicated. Temperature checks, mandatory masks plexiglass barriers and um, fewer players at card tables, which I guess we could have asked the guest Brian might know, which I imagine would change the game quite a bit if you're only playing with, say, three people instead of six at blackjack. Uh, doesn't change blackjack not much uh, or at all. Uh, Bucker changes a little bit your strategy, but not, no, the, the cards are still cards. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and just from my little blackjack experience, sometimes you'd sit down at a full table. Sometimes you'd sit down with two people. Like it didn't. Yeah, they just, just you. just got the cards. Right. Um, it'll be interesting. I I, know- I imagine the dealers will appreciate the plexiglass. They oh, probably no, my, my beloved craps. <laughs> What's going to happen there? Because everyone's throwing chips on the table. The dealers are grabbing the chips. You know what I mean? That's, uh, that's actually something where you're all touching the same. It, you'll have a pop o bubble instead of throwing it. Oh, God. <laughs> the pop o Was that called pop o Wasn't it? 
I kind of you remember know what I'm that. Talking about. Yeah, there was a stupid game. There was a whole bunch Boggle? of mm, it like trouble yeah. had it. There was a whole bunch of games where they had like don't break the ice and don't spill the beans and yep. you know <laughs> and and the operation and pop the ball. You would pop this yogurt, this clear yogurt cup, and it would <laughs> pop the dice like it was a hermetically right. sealed roll of the dice. Right. All little rich for the Corollas. Yeah, but what, Pop-O-Matic. What was the game? The game's called Trouble. It's Trouble. by Pop-O-Matic. Yeah. Trouble. Uh, oh, yeah. it's by Pop-O-Matic. All right. What else we got, Gina? A bit of sad news, actually. Singer Melissa Etheridge announced Wednesday that her and her filmmaker mm. Julie Cypher's 21-year-old son Beckett has died from opioid addiction. Mm. Cypher gave birth to Beckett in 1998 after being artificially inseminated. And while Etheridge and Cypher initially kept the identity of the biological father a secret, later revealed it was singer david crosby who's also the biological father of their daughter bailey jean so that was uh tough on them well yeah i heard i heard some stories i heard that was trending and then i then denzel washington popped up on my screen (laughs) no i i I was thinking about that like you know i maybe i spent too much time with dr drew but uh the addiction gene i was gonna say uh, I Crosby's mean, famously an addict. Right. I mean, you know, you're dealing when you're dealing with that gene, it's like if the mom is an addict or the dad is an addict, then either way or they're both addicts, it's like you got a 50 50 chance of getting it. And if you get it, you got it. And and good luck. It's it's a it's a battle. We all we all enjoy wine. Uh, you know, tequila, booze, whatever, beer, you know, whatever. We all reefer, whatever. But I don't think any of us really have the gene. When you have the gene, it takes over Mm -hmm. and it's, it's powerful. And it's, it's often a death sentence. And so if you're looking for people to potentially provide the gene pool for your child, it, it seems going to the addict gene seems really Risky, really risky. But I don't know enough about it. I mean, maybe Drew would go like like what I'm saying is, you know, guys, an amazing talent, amazing ability. And so you go, oh, that's great. But strong addict gene. Like, so, yes, go ahead. Here's a quote. You should. This sounds so stupid because we've all been around Dr. Drew for so long that we just know this to be pretty much how it is. But is it is it accepted both medically and socially that like addiction comes from a gene? Like as opposed, remember, remember back in the day, Oh, he loves the bottle too much. He just loves the bottle. It's like, no, he doesn't fucking love the bottle. The guy's got a fucking addiction. Yeah. Essentially an allergy to alcohol. I don't, I think it's accepted. I, I, I assume, but I don't know. Well, this is, well, uh, this is 21 years ago, but still yeah. seemed to be kind of common knowledge back then, but maybe that was just us. Where we were, but either way, it seems like while the talent and the musical talent part of that gene pool is super seductive, the Mm -hmm. attic part of that gene pool is probably seems like a a red flag. Yeah. Sad. And and also, uh, you know, I don't know. I know we chalk everybody up every senior's death to who died of heart failure to the coronavirus. I don't know. Do we chalk this one up to the coronavirus as well? A lot of people are missing their meetings and shut in and, and go into places going back to behaviors that weren't, weren't fantastic. There's, there's going to be a lot of that. There, there, yeah. And I know that, you know, with certain uh, anonymous groups, they're trying to do them on Zoom and they're trying to, but, you know, people who are used to, you know, if you're an addict, there's probably parts of your personality that are incredibly habitual. You do it this way for a reason. You have to replace it with something else. And I don't know if a Zoom meeting is cutting it for everybody. Well, they're saying that, you know, calls to suicide hotlines are up. 500 percent and blah, yeah, blah. there's a right. whole bunch of residual shit about locking people sure. down that's not right. just pure safeties some of them yeah, are right. gonna od some of them are gonna commit suicide spousal abuse child abuse it's just gonna be more it's not it's it's not a, a black or white thing it's not lock it down no residue or let everyone out everyone dies there's lock it down fine but there's a bunch of stuff that's going to come along with that and maybe this is some of it all mm-hmm. right uh what else you got sad 
Well, stories of Ellen DeGeneres' alleged meanness continue to surface, and she has had enough. A source (laughs) told Us Weekly, they said, Ellen is at the end of her rope. She thought this was all just sour grapes from a few haters, but it's not a passing thing. It just keeps coming. She's wondering what she can do to make people stop thinking she's mean. (laughs) Well, the beauty (laughs) influencer. She needs to dance more. She's not dancing (laughs) enough. Uh, Nikki de Jagger or de Jager accused the uh, accused Ellen of being cold and distant. That happened in February. And then if you'll remember, the comedian Kevin T. Porter asked people to share their stories about Ellen being one of the meanest people alive. He got more than 2000 responses. <laughs> then this month, crew members began to speak out, you know, crew members of her own show. Another source told Us Weekly that Ellen has been leaning on wife Portia de Rossi for support. And it's going to take a lot more than just a couple of disgruntled people to people to keep her down. Oh, well, God forbid she changed her behavior. Right. She's got F me money. So, True. you know, she's got uh, FM money. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's hard to get people to think. It, it, you can get people to think a certain way about you if you sit on sit next to them on a on a shuttle going into LAX, you know, from sure. the from Wally mm-hmm. Park. That's pretty easy. If they're going to work with you for a long period of time. <laughs> or work for you, especially, they're going to start to form some opinions. And it's going to be a pretty good composite of who you are. And now they'll have they'll have opinions about working with Jimmy Kimmel and Jimmy Fallon, and they'll have opinions about working with Ellen. But whatever they form, that's about it. I mean, I, I have the same thing. I'm, I'm the boss of a few people, and they'll think of me how I get them to think of me, which is sort of on me now. Well, that's like what you say, like you will determine how I treat you. You will determine the relationship between us. Mm. Yeah. And that's what I I'm kind of like, you think about anyone who has come and gone through, through these doors. There's been a few names, these hallowed halls. You think about them, how they got you to think about them. Do you think you're wrong about any of them? There's like, is there some other side of them that you'd never realize or that you're way off or that you just missed the mark? You can do a little, sometimes you round up, sometimes you round down. Hmm. But you think about all the different individuals who are here currently, who were here in the past, who may be on the, at the other shop. How do you think of them and, and po- why? Positively and negatively. Yeah, either way. I, 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 you guys think about Mike August one way or Nate or Chris or Dawson or whomever. That's, that's, that's about how they got you to think of them. Yeah. I don't know why there's not more of that. Everyone has a side to them that they sort of keep to themselves that they, they don't necessarily reveal. That's fine. That's That's something you probably shouldn't be bringing into work. But... In terms of your general affect, the way you deal with other people and the way you deal when there's mishandling of something or misscheduling of something or the shit goes down a little bit, that's on display. That's that's how it works. How when somebody tells you, oh, I know I told you Monday. I know I told you it was this Monday, but it was next Monday. And then you go, oh, shit, I brought all my shit in because I thought it was this Monday. And they go, I know they'll see how you respond to that. Uh, good or bad, mm-hmm. they will build a composite of of who you are. I will go full Mariah Carey on all of you if that ever happens. <laughs> yeah, well, and be known. they're little tips. Like if somebody doesn't want to tell somebody something, like you tell somebody, you know, you tell mm-hmm. them we're right. not going. Right. I'm not going to tell. Well, then that's saying something about that person. Who's right. going to break the news? Right. So yeah, what messenger is going to get shot? You know, Ellen. Letterman, Leno, Kimmel, who's going to walk into their office and tell them this disappointing news? And the answer is, well, for some of them, anyone will walk into our office and tell them that. And for others, you got to play rock, paper, scissors. (laughs) And it is they who who summon that in you. That's that's what I'm saying. And uh, again, it's not going to work for one night encounters or sitting next to someone in mass transit. But over over a number of years when you work with somebody, that's what you'll get. Just just like you get the people who are on time, the people who are late, the people are, you know, you know, when you're you would know 
for instance, if we have one of those, you know, we have eight people on the road and we're going to meet in the lobby at 530 and somebody mm-hmm. said the night before when everyone was walking back to the room, one person is not going to be down here at 530 in the morning. Go ahead and circle the initials of the person. <laughs> everyone would circle the same initials. Right. So what, what did they what happened? How do we know this? How are we imbibed with this? They taught us. They coached us up. They mm-hmm. let us know. That's what that's what humans do. Doesn't make that person a bad person, but the other seven people would circle the same initials. That's all. Well, there you go. It's all it's only tangentially related, but I had this thought the other night as I was falling asleep, and it's it's related to people who used to be here and do things versus people who still are here and do things. Um, you know what hasn't happened around here in a long time, and it's a uh, it's a credit to Kaylin. Uh, the bios have been on point. There's not mm-hmm. been a there used to there was a time where the bios had a mistake on a daily basis, oftentimes multiple times a day, and uh, the bios have been very very good. So uh, tip of the hat to Kaylin who puts together the bios. That's a very good that's a very good point. Although Chris, so think about it. When's the last smiling. time there was a mistake? No, um, all right. No, <laughs> no it, it, what, it no? hasn't. It used oh. to be. It used to happen the day after I threw a small tantrum about things being screwed up on the person's website or something, like sending them to this website that was incorrect. And it used to happen on a daily basis, and now it, it's it's rare if ever. It's a good point. Credit, credit words, too. All right, Gina, what else we got? Well, some bad news followed by a little bit of a burn salve for the bad news. Broadway's theaters will continue to be dark till at least September 6th. That's been announced by the Broadway League. The announcement did not come as a surprise to locals, considering New York and New Jersey remain very, very much hot spots for coronavirus. Um, So... Basically, theater and Broadway is canceled for at least the summer. 2018-2019 Broadway season brought in 15 million people and $1.8 billion in gross revenue. And maybe because they felt sorry for us and maybe because it's also a, a great business deal. The good news... And I'm sure Natalia is aware of this. Fourth of July weekend, uh, the film version of Hamilton will hit Disney Plus on July 3rd. It was actually filmed by the original Broadway cast in 2016, and it was supposed to go to movie theaters in October of 2021. But Disney head Bob Iger and creator Lin-Manuel Miranda announced um, this week that they will just release the movie on Disney Plus this July 3rd for everyone to enjoy. Wow. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's going to be cool. Yeah, Very cool. It's going to be all over that. Yeah. I'm pretty psyched about this. I've never seen Hamilton. I've heard it's great. I had no in, like plans of seeing it because tickets are hard to get. And this will be a serviceable version, I would imagine. Oh, well, it's the original cast. It's what I mean, that- film as opposed to being in the, you know. Yeah, the yeah, for sure. But it's very exciting because, you know, any one of us who, you know, everybody's familiar with it and you go and you see a road show and you're excited, but you just keep thinking, oh man, I wish I was seeing Lin-Manuel Miranda. This is the original cast. So it's going to be very cool. I realize this is my daughter's schoolhouse rock. That's the only thing right. I ever... <laughs> I learned everything about a bill and about a conjunction and yeah. all that stuff from Schoolhouse Rock. That, that's that's right. that's how I learned it. And she probably Your learned civics lessons. Yeah, she's learned everything she needs to know about Hamilton from Hamilton. Makes that's sense. Right. Good. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Let's do one more. You got it. Uh, so <laughs> this is a, a a tandem story. It would just give you a double dose of Joe Exotic news real quick. Uh, he would like very much to be let out of prison, and he thinks he has a shot at a presidential pardon. This is according to TMZ. Tiger King stars having his legal team put together a file to send to Trump to show how he was wrongly convicted. Joe Exotic is currently serving 22 years in prison for uh, a murder for hire plot to kill that bitch Carol Baskin, as well as other animal abuse charges. His team uh, has purchased a bus which is emblazoned with the slogan, President Trump, please pardon Joe Exotic, in the hopes that's going to get him to notice. But he's not just He's not he's not letting the time do him because now from prison, he has put out a clothing line. He's uh, now partnered with O'Dane Watson from O Dangerous Clothing. (laughs) And the line sold out within hours of just this soft launch, brought in 20 grand in sales. T-shirts, hoodies, sweats, face masks. They all have a big tiger on them. And uh, so he's he's really 
making some hay in there. Is there any There's question that he commissioned a hit on her? Not if you watch the documentary. They are quite clear about it. I mean, he's he shoots mannequins and he says, this is you, Carol, and I'm going to kill you. And the, the guy who he commissioned a the mask, collect- the mask. The mask is great with a hand sticking out of the tiger's mouth. Uh, did was down to do it and then chickened out at the last minute. He he was not. It, this was not clandestine. He was very loud about this. So they seem like they had enough to put him away. Plus animal abuse charges, uh, which you know is a. Does tough he to have with. a version of this that that holds together at all? Is what there, do you mean? I mean, he, he's defense. Does he, yeah, does he, that's what I'm saying. See, just say, yeah, I killed her. I got to go to jail. No, or I, I don't think so. I mean, I again, I didn't like watching this docu-series. This was not for me. This was not made for me. So I was kind of watching it half listening, but clearly not because he's they put him away for 22 years. So whatever his defense was, it was paper thin. Well, I mean, sometimes people go, here's where I was or here's what happened or here's something, you know, there's some cases that are a little more open you know cut and dried and then they're open and right. shut and then they're a little more where you kind of go gone. hmm did that guy really do that or not like you know they go uh you know the uh I, I don't know the army surgeon who came home and uh his family was killed and then he got accused of killing him but he claims right. hippies came in and he had a abrasion on the back of his head but it could have been self right. like there wasn't any of that it's just kind of like seems like this guy well, did it it was a murder for hire plot. She didn't right. die. No one was murdered. Oh, I so mean plot, a right? A little more nuanced, but um, but he. Ooh, I mean, if you during, had, yeah. Uh, according to my new decree, he has to be let out of jail. Uh, he didn't is put his hands on anyone. <laughs> didn't put his hands. He tried. He, okay. he hired someone to kill you someone, and they didn't even do it. So you got me there. Just keep I, him away from baby tigers. Do we not want to watch guys like that because it's a weird? neuroses on display that we're kind of being amused by or what I I have no attraction to that kind of doc or that kind of series yeah. either. I'm loving so, the bejesus out of the last dance. Maybe yeah. it's just because there's no, I have no other reason to watch ESPN except for the, the cornholing. Right. But sure. I, 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 it may be in a vacuum of other things, sports things to watch, but I find myself really enjoying the Michael Jordan doc. And but he's such well, a that's about, so I guess that's, what it is, is he's, he's he's such an amazing. Yes, it, it's amazing. So I watch it that way. The 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 fucked up people like like the honey boo boos of the world. Like yeah. I'm like, they're a fucking mess. I get it. Mm-hmm. They're all over the I mean, place. Why do I need to study them? Do you guys feel well, that this way? Is kind of a, this is a one two punch because I'm down with weird shit. I mean, if you know, I've seen Gummo, I've seen the wild and wonderful whites of West Virginia. I see all these, you know, crazy, you know, right. John Waters, whatever. Get get dark, get weird, get edgy, do your thing. This seemed like the sort of, I don't know, semi polished, less interesting version of that. And by the way, the whole attraction is these guys are so crazy. They're so edgy. They're such characters. I see enough characters. I, I, that's not interesting to me, but also you can make a very, very good case that they're all animal abusers. And I don't want to watch it. Yeah. I don't want to watch these tigers walking back and forth in cages. And I don't want to wa- I, I just don't, it's not, it's not entertaining to me. It's not fun. I'm sad. Okay. Let's bring it home, Gina Grad, as long as you're sad. <laughs> I'm so sad. That, that kind of stuff just, I don't know, it's not funny. I do, that too. Um, I, don't, I don't like anything yeah. where they're like experimenting with animals or look at this horrible footage we snuck into the Hormel you factory. You just like, when, like an, when an orangutan gets an uppercut that he deserved. <laughs> well, he was eyeballing Bobby Barasini. <laughs> Sorry. He's in the payroll. <laughs> I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina, Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Grad.